Hello ladies and gentlemen, before we get started I'd like to ask you to check out Sarah DiNapoli's channel. She's a very talented hooper. Go on over there and check her out, give her a sub. And here we go. Hello and welcome to Cat's Creative Forge. Today we're going to be heat treating the katana. Alright, what I have here is a cut open milk jug, a rasp file, and a, uh, a block of processed clay that's turned into, been cleaned out. There's no rocks or crap in it. And I'm just going to make a fine powder with it. I'm watching black video, blacksmithing videos while I work. Just watching some old Hickory Forge. Making crucible steel. I'm trying to get all the information I can so I can try it myself. As you can see, it wears away pretty slow. It's a slow going process. But you get this fine powder. Alright, got my clay here, got my ash here. I'm just going to start adding. So we got our ash and our clay mixed. I'm going to start mixing it with a little wood to see what happens. So I got that clay on there. Now we're just going to wait until it dries and give it another coat. I noticed adding the ash made it so much easier to paint on. It didn't just keep coming back off as I'm trying to smear it back on. It was more like a paint. Like almost like an oil based paint. I would compare it to pancake mix. Ladies and gentlemen, look at this grass. It's already four inches tall. And just a day ago, it was dead. Alright, so now we're in the workshop. It's time to get this uh, fire going so you can quench this sword. But first, let's see if the, I got the hole big enough. I actually keep falling in this, so today is the day when we do this and finally get it out of the way so I can fill this hole back in. <sighs> yes, that will work just fine. Depth is fine, but I want a little more length for that tank. Look at it, it's just like, it, it just keeps turning into more rock. By the way, this war hammer I made like, it's just laying around in here on my floor and shit, and it still, it works with a neck axe, it looks amazing. I'm quite proud of myself.
Looks pretty, all right. So I put it in and it actually curved hard and it sounded like it was breaking, but it held together, surprisingly. Let's clean it up. and gentlemen so I cracked it a bunch of places little cracks just in the hardened part but I held the spine held together so I'm going to keep going ahead and working on this it also curved I can't remember the person who said it will it curve and I'm like probably not because it's one uniform piece of steel but it did curve and it warped like crazy when I quenched it and I desperately went over and straightened it but first I put it in the fire and relaxed it and I could watch the whole thing literally almost straighten back out in the fire went across the spine went it like this and it like literally straightened out it was crazy and then I had to straighten it the rest of the way with the wood but I couldn't see and it's just a little bit wavy but I still confident it will perform I mean I can't believe that it didn't just banana yeah, see how straight it is on the spine, and but the blade kind of goes woo-woo. Yeah. I kind of had no choice in any way but to do it this way, because my clench bucket of oil isn't deep enough. See? That would be useless. I need a long trough that I could put oil in, and I don't know where I'd buy such a thing. But we're going to go ahead and... Go in the house and see if this fits into the uh, pieces we made for it. So, not the best thing that could happen. Oh, a couple cracks. We're going to go ahead and throw this together anyway. And, um, see what happens. We're going to do a chopping test in the next episode. And see if we can break it. Nothing crazy like aluminum or bricks, though. We don't, we're not deliberately trying to destroy it. We just want to see if it'll it'll take down some people. Anyway, Kate Davy, yes, it did curve. I was amazed. I thought that only happened to um, real katanas, and not this imitation piece of crap here. But I was wrong. It happened to just happened to any steel, I guess. If it's in this shape, your spine is gonna want to pull up. And I could imagine, like, the clay being completely even and the thickness of this being, like, as precision as possible. No divots, no, like, anything. And this was just, like, hammer forged out as thin as it could be. I was just trying to get, like, as much of that coil spring as, like, as I, as I could. A much blade out of a tiny little piece. I think it was only this long when I started. And it was just drawn out with the press to as, as big as you can see in the first video. And then hammer forged into this thin curvy thing and beveled later. So this, the steel, man, this steel went under so much stress. And I normalized it like over and over again. I didn't even think it was going to have any like carbon left. It was the experimental blade. Well, I've learned a lot, so now when I make a really good one someday, 
I'll know what not to do. Which is, don't use goddamn water. I forgot to put the brine in. Alright, so tune in next time. I remember I still got that bow saw is coming. I've got the unicorn crown coming. I've got this being tested coming. I've got, um, that Damascus folder. That's going to be coming too. As soon as I get the, uh, the metal for it that I'm looking for. And, um, other than that, that's cool. So, uh, thank you for watching Cat's Girl Forge, and you have a wonderful day.